Well, I think the first rule of music in a game is to enhance the mood and the setting and the story, but not to annoy people and not to have it run on and on incessantly. So we've worked really hard to create a, a system where the music doesn't play all the time. It, it kind of fades in out of the uh, bed of sound effects and, and, and ambiance of, of an area. It's not going to grab your attention right away. And it's meant to sort of allow the, the player to form their own associations and their own relationship with the zone, the place, the experience. It's definitely a balancing act to make sure that we um, don't create music that's so foreground or so uh, att demanding of attention that we take away from the quest line you're on or um, kill your ability to communicate with your buddies or, or what have you. There's a lot of synchronicity in the ideas we tend to have without, without even speaking, for instance, when we were first scoring uh, Howling Fjord. Uh, Russell was preparing to do a recording session for uh, for some music for that, and I came out and he told me, oh, I'm going to record the Yulian pipes, the bagpipes. And I just come out to tell him, like, oh, I just wrote a, a thing for bagpipes for Howling Fjord. So there was sort of this, you know, oh, we're on the same page. Throughout, uh, in Dragon Blight, in Borean Tundra, and many other places, you find this courage. So you'll hear quite a bit of prepared piano. And that's where you um, often take the lid off the piano and play the strings directly with your, your fingers or with bits of wood, or you, you, you pluck them or you strike the strings. Um, we didn't destroy any pianos in the process, but the idea was to get the sounds of harsh cold, severe conditions and use that as a, as a musical device. The concepts, uh, the lore, the character, the races, that's always the primary uh, mode of inspiration in the, in the games. So whatever we can find out, whatever we can see, whatever we know, about a particular area is completely crucial and influences just about everything. I always wind up visiting Evelyn and talking to her about what the backstory is for a given zone or a given race because nothing in this game is in randomly. It, it all makes sense. And what's so cool is that there's always an answer and, and it's usually pretty compelling and somewhere in the thread of that story I will find something to hang my hat on uh, musically. We took some music from the outro of War 3X and we set words to it which express uh, his coronation ceremony. And we had it originally sung by a male tenor. And while we were recording it, we were watching the rough footage of the cinematic while it was going down. I think it hit three of us at once. What if a boy alto sang it and juxtaposed this kind of innocent voice singing about the coronation uh, against these really strong visuals of Arthas after, you know, a lot of bad stuff has happened. And uh, luckily, there is a real fine boys choir where we were doing this uh, orchestral recording. And so uh, the next day we were able to have uh, a young man come in and record this part and uh, as it turned out he he didn't play video games but he was excited nonetheless and uh, he had a good time and we uh, gave him autograph copy of, of his 
score that he he sang to and he was a real pro he 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 uh, walked in spent about 15 minutes learning the part and nailed it the one thing i wanted to convey with the ambience is you're entering an area that's very cold In Boring and Tender, we wanted the ambience to sound more sparse and, and split and further out from you. It's, it, depending on where you're at, you know, it, the vibe is going to change dramatically. But the way that we are able to keep them blending is constantly bringing back an evil element in each of the ambient tracks. Unless a person is specifically attuned to listening to sounds, I don't want it to stick out. I want it to blend in seamlessly with the environment such that, you know, a person isn't running by and noticing everything that's popping out in the world because that's incredibly distracting. Different races have different accents, different creatures. Um, we'll try to switch it up. We, we want them to sound different, you know. Um, and then the actors bring so much, just having a variety of different actors who come in and have these fantastic voices. Let it be finished! Let it be finished! Let it be finished! The guy who played Arthas, he's, uh, he's an uber geek, like the rest of us. Which is great, you know. He plays the game, he's got a, a level 70 druid, but, you know, he's got his guild and everything else, and, and he's great. He's as excited about it as the rest of us who work here are, because he knows he's going to be going in there and playing through these missions, you know, that he's doing voices for. And, of course, he's a hero to all his friends. One of the really cool things that we've been doing for Wrathgate, the new cutscene, in WoW, which is also a, we've never done as well as half cutscenes in World of Warcraft in general that happen while a player's experiencing part of a quest line, is uh, we recorded a ton of people groaning and doing exertions and all that battle chatter that you're hearing is actual Blizzard employees. 